So you were rebellious as a young, you person. know, just punk straight oh, up. Right. Oh, like what so kind of punk, punk did you listen to? Just you know, Bad Brains and Crow Mags and Madball, hardcore, more, mostly hardcore. Yeah, you know, yeah. To be honest, not too punk because I, I got into music through metal. Oh, you liked metal? I was a metal. I was a young metalhead. I was a very young metalhead into like Deicide and Obituary and yeah. all that kind of stuff. I just kind of liked. Um, it's just older stuff, I guess. Yeah. Not really necessarily punk, but I was like kind of more into like the Clash. Even before that, like maybe like the Fugs. The or, Fugs. You remember the Fugs? No. It was like a New York kind of like mm. before there was like you know um, Stooges. Low fi very low fi music. That's and nice. I like the Stooges a lot. I liked Velvet Underground. Yeah. Like that. But heroin um, music. I liked heroin music. Yeah. I really did. Heroin music good. <laughs> yeah, and um, I also liked um. Sad core before it was sad core. Oh, you know what I mean. I like yeah. listening to music and wanting to kill myself. Yeah. Did you really? No, I've always. I don't have that. <laughs> oh no, I liked emo. Yeah. Did you never want to kill yourself? Uh, not intentionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm a happy spirit. I don't have too many demons. I was just like a joy boy who wanted to get fucked up and like smash everything. Yeah. Did you um? Did you do you like women? I mean, you're married, right? Yeah. Did you ever experiment? Both sides. I'm pansexual. <laughs> Are you really? Uh, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I think when I was high and drunk, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, when I get drunk, if, if I could do a key bump with you, I could French kiss you. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I get drunk, I get a little wild. I'll be honest. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's and why then, I don't drink. Yeah, but I've been with the same woman for twenty years. Congrats, wow. all Asia. Yeah, we went to prom together. Ooh, wow. Wow. Yeah. She's right. cute. I've she's seen goth. Photos of her. She was goth. She was like the one hot goth chick. Her whole family. She's like the youngest of like. What four four goths? So we used to call them craft. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we used to make fun. Of, it was just like small town shit. Her whole family was like the gothic girls. Yeah. You know, Wait, I think good. she was Canadian too. Firuza Balk from the craft, right? Really? Maybe. Wasn't she? Gilbert. Gilbert, get on Google. it. Google. George, what's wrong with you, Gilbert? He has no. I'll be honest. I'm yeah. looking at photos of your beautiful family. I was like, yeah. Oh. Look at your children. Oh. Yeah, Google image me. There we go. Endless amounts. Dude. I've I've put my entire life on the internet. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Squishy. There she is. Look at her. So um you started cooking at uh when you were 20-ish? Yeah, and then I dropped out of college, and then, you know, and then I dropped out of college, and then <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then I like toured around with like some metal bands and punk bands and stuff yeah. and have fun. And yeah. then and then um you know, I come from a working class family, so I didn't have like money. Mm. So then I had to get a job. Mm -hmm. Then I got a job when you used to have to hand out resumes. And then I used to hand out a lot of resumes. And then uh, the be I, I got a job at like the best bistro in Toronto. Mm. And then I was working there. And that's how it happened. And then, yeah, that was like, I went in there and I was like, oh, this is like a real thing. This is like school. Everyone's wearing chef whites and there's a chef and it's very intense. And yeah. And then I, uh, I liked it and I was good at it. And then I built up like self-esteem, I think. A little bit See, of self-esteem because I was good at something. But, but I bet you money, though, that you uh, also loved it. I loved it. It was, it was very similar to uh, being like with my friend's bands and being on the road and being in a van. It's yeah. tight knit. It's very intense. It's long hours. That's the thing. It's a, I think that you know? the thing that one needs to find mm. is a thing that they love mm -hmm. to do, right? Because I was addicted to, even when I was a young guy, to just going up in random places and doing stand up, you know, mm -hmm. and the adrenaline of it. And that was the first time where I felt kind of like alive, mm -hmm. you know? Not that you think that you're gonna like make it really. Mm. You just like, I found a thing. You yeah. found, you finally found a place that you belonged. Yeah. And that you respected. And you were like, if I give something, I get something back from it. Yeah, there was reciprocal. This, yeah, there was this uh, man by the name of Fred Burns who was mm. the general manager of the comedy store in the 90s. And he was, um, had spinal bifida. So you'd have to carry him around. Mm. And he was a drunk as well. And me and my friend Jonathan Gottsick, he used to go, come over. Because we used to, like, m make him, like, omelets. I don't, not me, but Jonathan would. And, like, and he would, like, get drunk yeah, at, until 2, 3 in the morning and in this so small Western. little tiny apartment. He lived with those, all these two other comedians. And he would tell these wild stand-up stories. And I remember me and Jonathan, because we were in our 20s, yeah. and just sitting around, like, kind of, like, not a campfire, but it felt like that. Mm -hmm. 